Drag me and God's house today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for this time. God, I thank you for the people that are here, Lord. You brought them here. They're here today, Lord. You, you brought them. They're not here by accident. They're here because you designed today to be a day that they should be here. And God, I just pray that, Lord, it's a time that you move among us. That, Lord, you will turn your Holy Spirit loose. That, you, Lord, you speak to us through Saran. And, Father, the testimony, the word that he brings through your word. And, God, I thank you, Lord, in getting to know him of being a man of God. God, I thank you that, Lord, you saved him. That you saved Jenny, Lord, that they're together. And that, Lord, you drew them here today to bring your word to us. And, Father, we give you the glory for it and honor for it. We're asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is good to have all of you out here today. I'm, I'm telling you, it's great to be in God's house. Thank you for being here. And if you're visiting with us, hopefully in front of you there's a visitor's card. Uh, if you would, fill it out. Uh, drop it off and play in just a few minutes. Because we would definitely love to have a record of your visit with us today. Glad that you're here and hope we make you feel welcome. In case in case you are visiting, let, let me tell you about the restrooms. Uh, there, there's restrooms right outside in the foyer here. Uh, ladies, the, the ladies' room here and then the men's right here. And also right down the hall here, uh, there's the ladies' and men's restroom as well. So if you need it, and if you're out in the fellowship hall, there, there's two restrooms there uh, and then one up the stairs as well. So if you're visiting with us and you're looking for the restroom, that, that's where they're located. Uh, again, we're glad to have Saran here today. I, I want to tell you, I've been looking forward to this. I appreciate Justin and Melissa uh, for helping bring them here. I understand Jenny did a great job last night uh, for the folks that were here during that period of time. So we're we're so glad. Jenny, where, where, I know you, there you are, right in the front row. I told you I didn't see you. Stand, stand up if you would. Stand up. This is Jenny Stacy. This is Saran's wife. Just glad to be here. Uh, a couple of announcements uh, in just a few minutes uh, after I get through with announcements. If, if you're a baby on up through kindergarten, then we'd, we'd like to dismiss you to Children's Church, Children Time. If you're first grade on up, just stay in the service today. Uh, if you would, just remain here. But all the others from kindergarten down, just ease out in just a moment and, and go to your, your rooms there that you normally go to. Uh, Next Sunday is Mother's Day, and uh, we will have a baby dedication next week uh, during, our, during our morning service, so we'd like to invite you for that. Hopefully you'll be here uh, and, and celebrate Mother's Day with us. Also, out in the foyer is a sign-up sheet, and Donnie uh, and, and Amanda, this is the last day for the Boston, and, I, what, and those of you that are visiting with us, I use Heine. Now, only it's Boston, but we don't say that in church. So I, so I have been trying to teach folks Boston hiding certain. So there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. Uh, hopefully you'll sign up. Uh, we're getting short on time, and so the day is the deadline to make sure that you sign up for it. Just, we're not needing the money today, but just your name and, and how many of them you want. So please sign up for that today. And one other, one other announcement, and then we're going to get into our worship. On the 18th, which is two weeks away, Melody Winslet, uh, I, I've asked her if she would to give her testimony during that time. It's going to be a baptismal service as well at the first. We've got five folks that will be baptizing that day. But also, Melody, I, I know some of you have heard her testimony. But if you haven't, it is a powerful, powerful testimony. And so she's going to be speaking, and then I'm going to have to close at the end with a short message. But I want to tell you, if you haven't heard Melody's testimony, you need to be here. You want to know how blessed you are. You want to know how blessed you are in the family. You need to listen to what she says because God has moved in that girl's life. So we're looking forward to that as well. All right. Any other announcements? In just a few minutes, Saran will come and speak, and I, I'm looking so forward to him speaking. I, I, I tell you what, how many Alabama fans are Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I figured there'd be a lot of them. <laughs> I figured there'd be a lot of them here. Amen. Amen. Brand company. Amen. Oh, God is good. All the time. Let's stand. Let's praise the Lord this morning. One day when God breaks the Mason skies, he's gonna take us home. We're gonna fly away with him.
this time. It was Brother John Ray, Brother Swim Times. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God, and all your blessings, Lord. Lord, we ask you to place your hand on Saran right now, Father. Yes, yes. Lord, as he comes up here and he shares, shares where he's been in his life, the trials that he's faced, the obstacles that he's had to overcome. Lord, just touch him in a mighty way that, that he might say one word that can change somebody's life in here. That can get him to open their eyes, Lord. We ask it not be him speaking, Lord, but you be speaking through him. Lord, we ask you to bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. So many things that you give us, Lord, this is just a portion that we can give back to you. Lord, I ask you just to take it and multiply it and bless it. Lord, thank you that we're in church this morning. Thank you that we get to come into your house and sing and praise your name. Lord, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for dying for us. I thank you for, for rising for us. Thank you for all you are, God. Thank you for all you've done through me. Thank you for the miles that you brought me. Lord, bless this service in a mighty way. In your name, amen. service we're going to take up a special offering for Saran. This is our general offering that will be going into the church but at the end of the service we'll be taking up a special offering for Saran. And I hope you'll give because I'll tell you you're a man of God. Great man of God. song this morning. The name of it is Oh Happy Day. And most of you know it, but when we get to that part, I want everybody to make you big over. Oh Happy Day. Uh, let's get started, guys.
my breath, I'm going to read this quick scripture. Matthew 28, 6 says, He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. How many of you believe that this morning? We serve a Jesus that walked up that road that was beaten. Had a crown of thorn on his hands. Spat upon him. Ripped his clothes off. That's the God I serve. That's the same God that robs Rand and Stacey out of what he came to. We serve a mighty and awesome God. Amen. Glorious day.
You can draw down that.
I'm just thankful to have Saran here today. Amen. And his wife, Jenny. I, I tell you, did y'all worship? Amen. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, that's worship. That's putting Jesus first. And that's what worship is. Saran, and I'm looking forward to this. We love you, brother. Glad you did. Thank you. Come on, brother. Thank you for coming back. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on, everybody, all overflow. Give him praise. Give him everything you got. Give him everything you got this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad when they said, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Pastor David, thank you so much for the invitation to come and share God's holy word. All of you at at uh, uh, South Shelby Baptist Church, all of your prayers that have gone up uh, for myself and my daughter. Uh, you know, you get, I don't know where you are in your prayer line, but you get to witness a miracle today. Yeah. And I am a living miracle. Amen. And I praise God for people that have reached out and prayed for us. And, and I stand here today. Uh, Jesus has resurrected my life. He, he, is, he is the resurrection and life. But the prayers of so many people, when they heard about that horrific tragedy seven years ago, started praying. And little did someone knew that this day, the person that you prayed for will be standing before you, giving a word from God. And I thank you from the depths of my heart for your prayers. My, uh, my new friends, uh, uh, Melissa Glass and her husband, Justin, I thank them for all they have, that they have done to, to, to bring us here. And, and, and my beautiful wife, Jenny Marie, she is standing with me now. She gave a word to some women yesterday. Was that not a blessing? Amen. Yes. <laughs> that was a blessing. She spoke about God knows. She spoke about God knows. And so even now, as we come into God's sanctuary, he knows. He knows what we're dealing with. He knows what we're going through. He knows the very beginning. He knows the end. He knew, amen. He knew what you did last night. He know. He knew what you did last week. He knows if you're harboring hate, unforgiveness, resentment. He knows. He knows that you're going through abuse. He knows. He knows that you need help this Sunday morning. He knows. And I come to I come I come I come to bring his life in his word today. If you had your Bible, could you turn to Isaiah chapter 4? Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 4. We'll start in the Old Testament and we'll read one uh, scripture in the New Testament. Uh, but, but I wanna I wanna uh, I wanna sing a hymn. I love to sing to God because that moves God's heart when he sees his sons and daughters singing to him. Amen. And it blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, and this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. my story. Yeah. On Christ this solid rock I stand all other ground his sinking sand. This is my story. I was lost but now I'm found. This is my story. I was in the darkness but there is a God by the name of Jesus that shined his beautiful light upon a vessel and was quickened back to eternal life. That's my story. What is your story this Sunday morning? What is your story? Where are you? Where are you are in your life this morning? Do, 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 you, do you love God? Do you have a relationship with our Father which are in heaven? Did you get up praying to him this Sunday morning? Did you get up first seeking God this morning? 
Mama Gail has been so gracious to allow Jeannie and I and Shelly to stay in their home, and, and it's, been, it's been a sweet spirit in their home. <coughs> I got up this morning, walking out in the yard, praying to the Father, praying about this message today. Praying to God that God do what only God can do. Change the very unchangeable. Make no mistake about it. In order for us to get anything up from God, we have to take off our church mask. Amen. We have to reveal our spirit. God is a spiritual God. And so you'll never get anything from him playing in church. That's my story. That when I get an opportunity to go after God, I know I'm going after a holy God. He's too holy to play church games, to play doctrines, to play denominations. He's too holy. He is God and God alone. Amen, somebody. This is what this man Isaiah is speaking about in this text. The holiness of God Almighty. I'm going to read quickly through uh, the first six verses. And then we'll flip over to Matthew uh, uh, chapter 25 and verse 46. We'll read one verse. Will you stand for the reading of God's holy word, please? I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and it, it, the verse 1 says, In that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will, we, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Verse 2, In that day the branch of the Lord, somebody say the branch. Yeah, the branch of the Lord uh, be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Verse 3, and it came to pass that he that is left in Zion, whoever is left, is he that remained in Jerusalem, shall be called holy. Somebody say holy. holy. It's holy. Whoever is left, this is a remnant now. Whoever is left after these bombshells have dropped, then they are going to be called holy. He goes on to say, even one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Verse 4, when the Lord shall uh, wash away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Two spirit that God was going to use. The spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Verse 5, and the Lord, not, not anybody else, the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon the assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. Last verse, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a convert from storm and from rain. Turn over to Matthew uh, 25 and verse 46. Matthew 25 and verse 46. When you have it, you give me an amen. amen. Okay, verse 46. He says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. You know, have you ever been in a hotel and you, you had a room key and you went to your room to go into your room and, and the key didn't work and you kept pushing it in and out, you know, and the key wouldn't work and you're like, good. So, so you got to walk back down to uh, the desk clerk and, and she got to reprogram your key and, and for you to get access into that room. And so, and so based upon that word, access, the access key. I've titled this message, The Access Key. You, you, the, to, to be able to access the Father, you got to have a key. Amen. And I'm praying this Sunday morning, God reveal what he has already revealed in my spirit unto his people. Let's pray. Eternal and all-loving God, we love you, God. We place no one above you. We put you first, God, this morning. And God, we thank you for the rising of this day. This is the day that you have made. God, we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are thankful this morning. Thankful to be in your house. Thankful, God, that we have a mouth to speak. And God, we have ears to hear, eyes to see. God, thank you for the food that you gave us this morning. Thank you for the water that we can drink. Thank you, God, that we are still alive in the land of the living. Father, we just want to say thank you. If we don't do nothing else this Sunday morning, 
in this house, we can say thank you, Jesus. We can say thank you, Lord. We can give you praise and honor which you so richly deserve. I thank you for this word. Let it go out, Father, and do what, it, that, what, what only it can do, Father. That is pierce the heart. I mean the heart and the heart. Pierce the mind. Pierce the soul and the spirit. And God, and God bring someone that is in darkness into the marvelous light. I rebuke the powers of the devil right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to, we invite you into this sanctuary to move amongst your people so that you may be glorified in the heaven realm. In Jesus' eternal name, we all say together, amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I want to briefly, just briefly, do a little history. I, I, I want to go back so, so this message will make sense to you. We have to go back to the book of beginnings in Genesis. In Genesis chapter number one, we read about God. In the beginning, God. He is first. We read about God started creating things. Genesis chapter one is a, is, is a life a life forming chapter. Yeah. God started forming things. And so you start reading about life forms. God is first. You start reading about plant life God made, animal life God made, bird life God made. You start reading about, about God made man. He, 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 he started, God started making things. There's six forms of life when you start reading Genesis chapter one. But there's actually seven. And we don't read about that until Genesis chapter 3. Well, based upon that angelic life in, in Genesis chapter 3, based upon that, we, we, we have all of these life forms. And, and we start with God himself. God is the, as Watchman Nee calls, the highest life form. Amen. He is the very highest. And every life form has a conscience. God has a conscience. So God had a plan. God had a plan. And we have to, we have to, in Genesis chapter one, you can read it. God had a plan. Two things. One, he wanted to reveal himself to mankind. He wanted to, he wanted to, he wanted to reveal himself to us. Amen. He wanted us to be, to bear his image. Right. The image of God Almighty. Think about this. He wanted you to reflect him. He loved you that much. He says, he says, I want you to be me. I want you to, 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 to reflect my divinity. That's the first thing planned that God. The second thing, God wanted to give humans, the human life form, rule and reign upon the earth. You read it in Genesis 1 and 26. God says, let us, let us, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us, you know, you know give man dominion over the earth. Let us. And then, and so now we see God in his plans before the fall. And we know what happened in the fall. We know what happened in the garden of Eden. God plants a garden and he tells Adam, he says, he says, there's two trees that God puts in the middle. It's significant. Don't miss out on this. God he made a bunch of trees in the garden, but he put two in a central location. And it was the garden, uh, it was the tree of life, and it was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And let's look at those trees briefly. Amen. We have the tree of life. The tree of life, that tree is, 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 is goodness. It, it is the tree of life. It's is, 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 is God's uh, uh, access to us. It's an access key. The tree of life is, is, is a reflection of the divinity and the glory of God Almighty himself. The tree of life. And then, and then we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We have this tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God tells Adam and Eve, don't you eat of this tree. The day you eat of it, you will surely die. And so, and so man, man, Ultimately, and we beat up the woman and say it was the woman's fault because she ate the apple. But God never told the woman. He told Adam first. Amen. You want to go deep into scripture, you look in Genesis 2 and verses 16 and 17. He tells man, he says, he says, look, 
He gives a commandment. Don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when Adam ate of it, the Bible said their eyes will open up. Yeah, right. He had already eaten of the fruit. But Adam, the man, the man. See, God is so passionate about men because he made us first. Right. He made man first. And men walk with God and dwell with God. The life that Adam lived, we can only fantasize about as men. He had a relationship with the father.